it's Melky here and I'm going to do something today which is like reacting to live news so this is Bloomberg and let's start and uh, we can have uh, a, a significant drop in uh, uh, in the in the barrels that are transported uh, uh, waterborne from Russia and to Claudio, Asia. We want to talk about China. We also have to remind all of our viewers that we found out about 15 minutes ago, actually 10 minutes ago, that the Chinese former president, Xi Jinping, had died. He uh, had organ failure, we yeah. understand, and also leukemia when he was 96. Yeah, 96 years old, uh, long speculated around his health. Certainly when I was there in China, there was a lot yeah. of speculation about his health. Uh, the former leader who, who drove through a number of reforms, particularly in, in the late 1990s with Zhu Rongjin. Oh, it's not Xi, uh, it's Johnson. Drive, uh, the opening of, of that economy. And we're, t and we're talking about the economy and, and the extent to which China and the reopening there, wow. if it happens next yeah. year, will, will impact so the oil. So this is yeah, the, course, the yeah. official that was in power during the Ty Tiananmen Square? Uh, if you guys don't know, this is the demonstration where um, a lot of Chinese were killed. Uh, reportedly, reportedly, because of course the Chinese government uh, admitted differently. Price of oil much, much higher. Correct, correct. There is a lot of uh, what I call pent up demand there because China has been in a in a state of semi lockdown for the past three years. So they, uh, what they do is, uh, as soon as there is a uh, yes, there is a demonstration COVID, in China down. right now. But, uh, we need to be careful. They don't lock down the entire country. That's 1.6 billion people. It's they 1.5. They only lock down the for a long time. December. This lockdown. It can be big. It can be as big as uh, the UK, 60 million, but it's still a fraction of the population. So if you look at what happens at the province level, then you do see a huge drop in traffic. But if you look at nationwide. It's not that, uh, that big of a difference from what happened just uh, a few months ago when, uh, when they locked down Beijing or Shanghai. So if I look at the real-time data that we have at Rice, that then uh, you see that uh, it's just a 2% so far, 2% drop. So I'm not too concerned as long as the, uh, the COVID doesn't go really uh, out of control. All these different variables, but I'm going to ask you this question anyway. As you look into 2023, where do you see prices? Well, so... Uh, okay. I mean, uh, Okay, so my take on this is like um, the lockdown has been the zero zero policy has ins, um, instigated sick sickness in people in the way that they are they're they're fed up. So they they are having a demonstration, and it significantly um, brought the attention to China in a way that people are people are always like that when things are happening in China, right? They are like. Oh, is this it? Is this is it? Because it's like a, the, the the impression to the outsiders would be. I am not an insider Chinese. Uh, they are like, uh, oh, uh, China is this a play, oppressive place, and uh, there's a chance that the people are going to revolt. And indeed, some of the titles in YouTube is talking about revolution in China. But would there actually be a revolution? Though I wouldn't go so quick to judge. Uh, that that would be the case. However, um, indeed, we're we're gonna we're gonna anticipate some some um, anomalies, of course, in the price of yuan, as we know that um, Russia has started to use yuan more than and reduces the usage of dollars, and then um, things like that. Uh, when 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 uh, the Chinese um, situation. A market inside market of China is experiencing such turmoil. Uh, then we could expect like temporary shift of investment towards like Korea and Japan and Vietnam. I do believe, um, and it it kind of uh, since it is not the dollar, I don't know exactly. I I am sure that doesn't have direct impact to the price of oil. However, though. Um, you know, given given that the demonstration is successful and somehow um, there's some kind of leniency in the in the policy that the Chinese government implemented, and people are starting to act, uh, perform activities again, and we would we would kind of um, I don't know, there's a chance that the price of oil would increase again because of that. Uh, it, but even even if it is not uh, such. Um, Currently, OPEC Plus is still um, having the price of oil increase. We know that OPEC monopolizes the price of oil, right? Their policy currently is increasing the price already. 
So if we, we, we see that the China being one of the biggest consumer of oil, uh, and even at the current lockdown uh, situation, if this didn't become better, the price would increase as well because they want money. <laughs> they want money and China, the Chinese probably is not buying as much as they anticipated last year. Um, yeah, uh, let's see China's what's happening here again. More than tripled in size. Millions of rural workers were finally able to live and get jobs in cities as the iron rice bowl system tying them Either to way, work units was dismantled in the 1990s. And by the end of the decade, Beijing and Washington signed a landmark deal, opening China's markets to the West, paving the way for a long-awaited entry to the World Trade Organization in 2001. Are awarded to the city of Beijing. That achievement was matched in the same year, when Beijing won the bid to host the 2008 Olympics. In the years that followed, foreign investment surged. Real estate construction boomed. But while Jiang was liberalizing All right, the economy, guys, I think, things were not the same. I think uh, I'm not going to go deep into this. This is starting to get a documentary. Let's move on to another channel. Begin with breaking news just coming in. Okay, so What's this is NBC. What's happening next? And what They're in a you? commercial break right now, I do believe. The Russian attack on Ukraine. There's an intense artillery battle underway. As we look out over the latest city turned crime scene, we see the things left behind. Fewer people are content to just offer their thoughts and prayers. Stunning testimony. Honestly, I really want the Ukraine war to stop. I do hope that there is a way to do it, but I, I couldn't really kind of predict uh, probable outcomes. I hope it would, it would stop. This Tuesday is going to be huge. This is big if we're talking about November. This feels like an ideological fight to the death. Is there room for common ground? What do you think when you see the activism? Do you think this could have happened without social media? We're coming on the air with the news. NBC Scoop. Bringing the news to you is not only a job, it's an honor. Mr. Secretary, when is this going to get better? You okay, sorry, guys. This is still a commercial break, so I'm going to try another channel. In NHS okay, guys, so this is Sky News from Europe. That we all, oh, from that Britain, we all I guess. And to make We're not sure that. the threshold everywhere, Sarah, but it was eight out of 200 mm. employers is where you met the yeah, threshold. Yeah, it's from Britain. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we will and be. You're comfortable we will be... with calling people out on strike, and we're only eight out of 200 employers. Two, um, 280,000 ballot papers sent out. Only eighty thousand voting in favour of strike and, and a strike, and you're and you're comfortable with those numbers. So it's eighty thousand people that returned their ballot papers. So we have a very arcane system in the uh, in industrial law where we have to run all of our ballots by post. So people cannot vote online as they do in other in other elections. We're not allowed to go into workplaces and run secure ballots there. People have to wait to get a ballot paper through to their home address, and then they have to send those ballot papers back. So we had over 80,000 people Industrial that actually took unrest. action, which I think sends a really strong message to the government about the strength of feeling of NHS workers. OK, unfortunately, we are out of time, so we are going to have to leave it there. We've got to ask the trade union leaders um, tomorrow, if you'd like to come and join us for that to answer some questions from members of the public, we would be absolutely thrilled to see you, Sarah. Okay, guys, I don't know what exactly is happening because I, but they are talking about uh, union workers and stuff. I think uh, this pandemic and this economic situation where inflation is happening and stuff, we got to be realistic, guys. Um, like the, the severance pay, first of all, is absurd. Okay, like people give salary, they work and they got salary. Severance pay has never been traditionally into the equation. It is not intuitive. And if you put it there, why, why, what is the purpose? Okay, so you want to prevent uh, exploitation or slavery. But I mean, you, you, you also causes businesses to not, to not fire. And that is a problem. We like that is a problem to versatility. And personally, as um, as someone who whose background, um, like m have a lot of uh, relatives that that do, that are entrepreneurs. I personally cannot say 
I am an entrepreneur already, even though I do have a company. Um, but it's it's pathetic. Okay, so I I just think right, but I do have I I do give salaries, and I think I I would imagine if I have to worry all the time about um about um severance payment, that would really make um that would really leave a bad bad taste on my mouth as an entrepreneur who have already saved up a lot of money to buy assets, not spending it, saving it, and actually investing it with the risk of failure, all of those money out. It's like a, like it's like you're getting a cut on your salary, and at the end of the day, you wouldn't receive that cut for anything, not for pension, not for anything, but you risk it for something that, that, that has a good chance of failure. That is just so crazy. And you're like, Okay, you gotta pay severance pay. The government is like, no, severance pay. You cannot fire your employees. I mean, like, this is so ridiculous, guys. And you gotta be realistic in this difficult time. You gotta go back to to reality. You gotta back uh, go back a hundred years, right? Where where things are just working in a way that makes sense. This is kind of too artificial, guys. Like, if you're a what the. If you're like a government, okay, you're like a government. You have steady income of taxes. You you are bound to receive those tax those taxes by rule, all right. I think you could kind of say, all right, I'm going to, I have to pay a severance payment. But as businesses where customers are not guaranteed to always shop there, I mean, like you you require severance payment with that much amount okay like i now uses like a upfront upfront calculation right so i calculated all how much how much severance payment at the end of the day and every year i'm going to fire my employees so i'm just going to fire them and next next year i'm going to employ but them back again i just don't want it into the equation moreover like people who resign right they don't get severance payment so why would they resign uh in in a good manner? Okay guys, so the the news are starting. But then you're not going to want to employ people with with low, with minimum salary. And why is minimum salary the in the equation in the law? If you cannot utilize it. <laughs> so ridiculous, in the UK guys. In the coming years. Also ahead, I feel bad for the factories. Wales' economy minister says he'll be very surprised if there aren't walkouts in Wales too. And with nurses already planning strikes next month, Unison's head of health tells us they'll be talking about coordination with other industrial action. It's Wednesday, the last day of November. Momentous and historic hopes after a new drug is found in trials to slow the progress of early stage Alzheimer's. We think in 2025, it could benefit at least 106,000 people in the UK if it is approved. That's a Ambulance good thing. workers in England are set to strike before Christmas. Oh, no. The union says they're considering coordinated action. In a right, so, so, oh, this is the one. So, guys, again, um, it's great that about the Alzheimer news, guys. I think fasting is going to help you to perform that autophagy, and that autophagy would help eat that amyloid beta and could could also help for um for against uh alzheimer i kind of caught a little glimpse of a journal article scientific journal article about that the relationship between autophagy and amyloid beta you gotta check that out and then about um um, um the um, ambulance worker or health worker COVID in general they are heroes and they are they should be like remunerated as heroes and something like that after the COVID, of course, they, they they deserve all the best that they could. And I think like the way we 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 channel or we reward people is is not optimal indeed, right? And it is something that like if that that has a perpetual like royalties, we give royalties to to like intellectual property that we kept on using and kept on generating income for us, and then. In one way or the other, or by law, or just by consciousness, we kind of rewarded that sources of solutions greatness. But then, um, 
what about medical health workers i do believe that they contribute to in a in a royalty deserving kind of manner and i, I think we should address that but <laughs> Right, we should address that in an accurate articulation. Otherwise, there's going to be a problem. And the problem, as I talked about before, severance pay and stuff, it's not objective. Like people who acting up, people who are, who are deserving to be fired are the ones who receive the severance pay. And the people who are not, people who are having a good relationship and, and everything, it's just it, it's not getting it. Well, the amount is freaking huge. The amount is too huge, and I. Oh, okay. But shout out to the medical staffs, like they are heroes. They are heroes of our time, and we don't need any more wars. We need. I hope everything would just would just become much better. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.